Hi everybody, my name is Allie Nickerson and today I'm going to show you how to get started with Google Forms. So we're going to start off by going to forms.google.com. You can also go to forms.new and that will bring up a blank Google Form for you. But by going to forms.google.com you can see a bank of templates and also any of the recent forms that you own or have used. So down here we can see all of my recent forms and I'm going to show you a couple of examples and then how to create our own. So this is the blank quiz that forms.new will bring you to and we're going to go over the question types before I show you some examples. So Google Forms is great because it is a way for your students to get immediate feedback or maybe not so immediate feedback if you want short answer responses. And then they can see their data on how well they performed. So within here, I'm gonna go ahead and change this. So let's call this and we're gonna make this a math quiz. And let's say that we're teaching on multiplication. So use multiplication strategies to solve the following problems. So here we have our first question type. Now you can see over here with the drop down, here are the different types of questions that you can ask. So you can have a short answer question, you can have a paragraph, you can have multiple choice, you can have check boxes where they select more than one right answer, you can have a drop down where they select the right answer, you can have them upload a file, you can have them use a Likert scale, you can have a multiple choice grid, you can have a checkbox grid, or you can have them answer with a date and time. So if you're collecting data like um, what time works best for you for our parent-teacher conferences, maybe that's when you use date and time. If you're using analog and digital clocks, maybe that is a great um, quiz option to have, like a answer option. Um, so for this, multiplication one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 2 times 5 equals. And again, check your standards and everything on Blueprint to make sure that you are following the module and the standards and everything that's expected. This math quiz is just for the purpose of showing you everything that Forms has to offer. So then right here, what I would most likely do is if you want students to just give you an answer, short answer works fine. If you want to give them some choices, you can go ahead and do that. But for this one, I'm going to say short answer. Now down at the bottom, you can have an answer key where you can type the right answer. And that is how students are going to get immediate feedback. So they will see right after they submit their quiz that they got the answer right or wrong. I'm going to turn on that this question is required. Students have to answer this question before submitting the quiz. Now, if you would like to duplicate this question and change out some numbers, you just click this button. Um, you can delete the question if you want. You can add a picture. Let's say that I want to look up a multiplication array here in Google. I'm going to choose this picture and insert this. So now students can use this array to help them solve. So I'm going to say use the array to solve. And this is 3 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 3 times 7. Now, if you wanted to, you could link a YouTube video or maybe even a video that you have created showing how to solve. So that way, if they need more support, then they can refer to the video. It just kind of depends on what you want this quiz to be. If you want it to be your formative or summative assessment, if you want it to be just a check-in, maybe a small group station where they can use videos to help support. It really depends on what your intention is as a teacher, but there is a way to insert YouTube videos, your own videos, maybe a video from Drive. You can insert an image like we just did. There are lots of different things that you can do here to help scaffold and support for students. Now in the short answer text, again, you could have the answer key where the answer is going to be 21. And if they answer anything else, it's going to tell them that their answer was incorrect. Now, if we scroll down, I'm going to click the plus button to add another question. From here, these are all the options that you have to add a question. You could import questions if you already have a list of questions somewhere. You could add a title and description. You could have an image, video, or you can add a different section. 
So if you want the students to go to like a new page on their form, that's what adding a new section will do. And so then if we wanted to move on to multiplication using repeated addition, this is just a different strategy, a different way that I want them to solve. So maybe the first section we wanted them using arrays, the second section we're using repeated addition. Again, you can insert a video link if you want to show them a video of how to use repeated addition to solve. That would be a really great way to have a small group station and a reteach station as well. If you decide that you want it to be all one section, you can always go back to the three dots here and click to merge with above. And so now it's back to section one and it's all just gonna be on one form that kids will keep scrolling down. If you wanna change your theme, you can totally do that. You can change the font, you can change the question font, text font, header font. You can have a header image that you can import and you can also change the theme of the form. So if you want it to be red, maybe math is correlated to a certain color, like math is red for students. So you wanna make the form color red. So that was up here under customized theme. We're going to preview so this way you can see what it looks like for students. So when students get this form, this is what they will see. They will answer their questions like this. Students have the option to click view score and they can see which questions they got right and wrong. It'll show that I got 20 out of 20 up at the top here. So this is a great way to give your students immediate feedback and for them to see how they're doing. Now back on the quiz you also have an undo and redo button. You also have the option to send this form. I would always say make sure to collect the email addresses so you know who is responding. You can send through email, a link, or an embedded HTML which we probably wouldn't use unless you're putting this on like a website somewhere. So probably through a link for students and you can shorten the URL and copy that. So you could send this out through Relay, you could send this out through Google Classroom, however you wanna get this link to students, and then they can take this quiz. That's the basics of creating different question types on your Google Form. I'm gonna show you a couple of examples of what Google Forms can look like. So if we go back to Forms, I'll show you a couple um, examples that teachers have used. So it can be used for an exit ticket. You could use it instead of a worksheet as an assessment. So here is one about money. So to create this form, I clicked on the image button and uploaded a picture of money and asked students to tell me how much money is there. And so it was a very basic quiz and this was just a really quick way to check in on students and see how we were doing with money. Here was an example of doing some review with adding doubles. So it was a little bit of addition review with students. And with this, there was a video that explained how to add doubles and different strategies for students. So they could watch this video and then go through and answer all the questions. And they all have the correct answers. So students got immediate feedback on how well they knew their doubles. As a teacher, that data was so helpful because I was able to see who needed more help with doubles in a small group setting or one-on-one. -on -one. Here is another form that I used with my students on graphing. So again, I uploaded an image and asked students to answer questions based on the different graphs. Here you can see that I had 21 responses. There were seven total points that students could get. So if I click on the response tab, this gives me a lot of amazing data to look at as a teacher. So I can see the average score, the median score, and the range of points that were available for students. You can look at the data by question to see for each question. You can also click on individual and what this does is it shows you each individual form completed by each student and how they answered all of the forms. Another powerful thing for you as the teacher is that you can link this to Google Sheets. And now in Google Sheets, I can get a quick look at all of my data. I can see which students answered which questions correctly. I have all of this data available to me as a teacher if I wanna bring it to my team meetings and talk about the different data and what we need to work on and monitor and adjust with our standards. This can be great for just tracking class data to have every assessment 
on a sheet. So right here you can always add a new tab that has new data and it can all be filled in within the same Google Sheet. You can sort by who scored the highest or lowest so that you can make your small groups based on that. It's a really great way to get a quick look at all of the data from the Google Form. So that's the power of Google Forms in a nutshell. There's so much that you can do with this data and it is so much easier for you and the students to see data, to know exactly how students are doing with that immediate feedback and to know where to intervene to help support. Now, your job as part of this training is to create your own Google Form. Think of an upcoming assessment that this could be really useful for, or maybe it's a behavior form as a way to track student behaviors. You can get creative in how you wanna create your own Google Form, but I want you to create your own Google Form and either copy the link to it or take a screenshot of it and upload it to the Jamboard so that way we can learn from each other and see all of the amazing ways that Google Forms is being used in our district. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'm so excited for you to use Google Forms. Bye guys.